So this topic here, since I forgot to hit record, graphing functions. So let's take a function, y equals x squared minus 2. Notice this is different than the one we just did. The one we did was linear function. Linear always straight line. This is not linear. The highest power of x is not 1. This is a quadratic equation. So it's not really a straight line. We call that graph. Anyone knows there's a name for it? Yes, parabola. So the graph is going to be a parabola. Again, how do you graph it? We make a table. We pick values for x, and we compute the y value. Since it's not a straight line, you're going to need a few points. Three points will not do it. So maybe I'll go, well, let's start with 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. That's x. And let me find the y value. So I chose these values. No reason why I picked these numbers. I could have picked 3, 5, negative 4, 7, minus 2. So when x is 2, what do we have? What's 2 squared? 4, 4 minus 2, which is 2. When x is 1, what's 1 squared? 1, 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. When x is 0, what is 0 squared? 0 minus 2, negative 2. When x is minus 1, minus 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 2 is what? Negative 1. When x is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 take away 2, which is 2. Now let me graph them. Let me find these points, 2 and 2. One and negative one. Zero and negative two. Negative one and one. Negative two and two. And if I connect these points, my graph will look like this. As I said, this is a parabola shape. It has a minimum value right here. So to, like, to go back to what we did early, the domain here for this, you can use any x value. The range is the y values. And the smallest y value is negative 2. from negative 2 all the way to infinity. This is 0 comma negative 2, this point. So my range goes from negative 2 all the way to the sky, to infinity. Now, a couple of things, especially in math, we always tell people when you graph, make sure 
your graph should be smooth. Don't put these V shapes. We don't like them in math. Especially when you take calculus, you'll know why we don't like them. They create a big problem for us. So when you connect these points, don't try to connect them with a straight line and have all these corner pieces with V shapes on them. And also, when you pick in values for x, pay attention to your domain. An example here, let's say I want to graph y equals 1 over x minus 3. You know x cannot be what? 3. That's your domain. So you know you can't use the 3. So don't go there and go, let me try a 3 there. We're just telling you, you can't use it. At x equals 3, your function does not have a value. So if I was graphing that immediately, I will go and put like a, a red line, like an X. I'm using red because red always means stop. Don't go there. One, two, three. I'm going to put a big red line there. So don't cross this line. Don't touch it. Stop there. Can't be. So let me look to the left of that red line. Let me look at the right side of the red line. To the left of it, maybe I'll choose 0, 1, 2. To the right of the red line, maybe I'll use 4, 5, and 6. When x is 0, one, negative 1 over 3 when you plug it in. So somewhere here. When x is 1, that will be negative 1 half. When x is 2, that's a negative 1. And you can't really touch that line. You can't cross it. So the fact I'm going down here, I'm going to continue to go down like this. The only thing, I'm not sure what will happen here. Does it go above this line? I don't know. So let me just add another value, like minus 50. Just maybe that will help me see it. Way down here, I'm going to use that number to see if it goes above that line or not. When it's minus 50, it's negative 1 over 53. No, that says it's going to go right there. It's going to look like this. It will never go above that line, never touches that line. Now let's look at the right side of the graph. I chose the 4, 5, and 6. When x is 4, that's a 1. So 4 and 1 is right here. When x is 5, that's 1 half. Shrinking. When x is 6, that's 1 third. So the graph looks like this. You can never touch that line. You approach it, but you never touch it. The fact that was going up as I'm traveling this way, that tells me continue to go up toward that line.
So pay attention to your domain. Another way of paying attention to the domain, I'll give you another example. Give you a chance to finish writing there. I'll do a couple more examples then. The notes I have on the website, that sh should be enough for you. Let's go to the next one. Let's say I have this problem. F of x, y, whatever you want to call it. The square root of x minus 6. And you want to graph that. Again, you want to pay attention to your domain. We said early when we're doing problem like this, when I asked for the domain, I think you told me you want the value under the square root to be greater than or equal to zero. Which means what? X has to be greater than or equal to six. So you can't use any number less than six. So let's pick values for x and find the y value, or f of x. When x is 6, when x is 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't, I don't need that many. When x is 6, what's 6 minus 6? Square root of 0? Zero? 0. So 6 comma 0. That's right here. When x is 7, 7 minus 6, 1. The square root of 1, 1. 7 and 1. When x is 8, 8 minus 6 is 2. What is the square root of 2? 1.414. When x is 9, 9 minus 6, 3. What's the square root of 3? 1.732. And when x is 10, that's a 4. The square root of that is 2. So you can see the graph looks like this, and it doesn't stop, it keeps going. So all square roots will look like that. Again, what's my domain? X has to be greater than or equal to six. You can't have a number less than six, we can't use that. The range y is greater than or equal to what? Zero. And you can pick any function to graph it by picking points. The only time we end up in trouble when the functions start to behave like crazy. Because let's say you have a function You and I are not going to use 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 We're always going to choose some nice numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. You don't want to write this one down, but just to give you an idea. Let's say this is the 1, the 2, I'm exaggerating, the 3, the... 
So when x is zero, you had a zero here, and went like this. But it got there, it started to go like this. So when you pick when x is one, the mass, oh, that's the one. When x is two, oh, that's, two is right here. When x is three, that's right here. So you and I might miss actually the crazy stuff that happened between. So when we graph it, to us it looks like the function went like this. Doesn't it? There's no way I'm going to be picking like 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.15, 1.16. 1 so I missed all the crazy stuff that happens in between. And there's really no way to fix it right now. For this class, we can't fix it. For Tech Math 2, we can't fix it. You gotta wait till you take Calculus 1. If you end up taking Calculus 1, we'll get these values. We'll find them. Or you can take the easy way out, get a graphing calculator, graph it, boop, right there. But you can't use them on the test. So it doesn't do you any good. So that's introduction to graphing there.